This is my commuter bike. One speed, 20 inch wheels, and oh, it even folds too. This was the perfect city commuter for me traveling to and from work by train until I moved away from downtown. Now I'm faced with new challenges getting home. But what could be seen as a challenge is actually an opportunity. You see, this opens up the door for expansion, bike expansion, and we all know what the formula for what that is. And so the search began. I knew I wanted this new commuter bike to have three things. The first one being gears to climb hills. The second one being rack mounts. And the third, I wanted to have a robust steel frame so that if it were to get dinged up on the train, I don't have to worry about it. And I found one that fit the bill, figuratively and literally. But before I get into the nitty gritty of the bike, I just wanted to talk about how I was able to save 20% off the Craigslist listing price. Which reminds me that I had a fourth criteria for the bike. It had to be less than $500. It was off Craigslist and it was listed at $375. Instead of writing a bland email that wrote, will you take $300? I took a totally different approach and I tried to communicate as a human being, sharing what my intentions were for the bike, as well as I tried to frame it so that it was a win-win for both the seller and the buyer. So I wrote the seller this email instead. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with reading the email, so feel free to pause it and proceed. And that worked. I was able to go pick up the bike the following day for $300 cash and save 20%. So next time you're buying off Craigslist, be nice, show the seller some empathy, and perhaps both of you will benefit in the end. By the way, if you like that tip, please proceed to pump that like button. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate you. Now let's get back to talking about this bike. It's a 1991 Trek single track 970 mountain bike. And being three decades old, the condition of this bike is amazing. Starting off with a frame set, made in the USA, lugged steel frame with True Temper OX. It features a mix of Shimano Dior XT and DX components. Consistent in quality and performance. Function specific design because form follows function. To help me get up the hills, it came with a 3x7 drivetrain. No shame in my grandmother's gear. It has a 26 inch matrix wheel set, which was also built in the USA, laced with Shimano DX hubs. The wheel set is paired with matrix cliffhanger tires that are two inches wide with even the original nubs on it. The seat post that came with the bike is a post modern and I updated the saddle to a fabric scoop. Now the question is, how am I going to personalize it and make this my own? Given that I'll be using this primarily on paved roads, I've opted for Compass Rat Trap Pass tires. Moving from a two inch knobby tire to a slick 2.3 inch tire with plenty of volume. Immediately after installing these tires, the bike feels super cushiony and less twitchy up front due to the larger contact area with the ground. The added bump absorption from the larger volume complements the steel frame super well, which was already pretty compliant on rough roads to begin with. To further personalize this bike, I want to install a front portour rack. However, although my fork has big fork energy, it was lacking in eyelets and even with adapters installed, it positioned the rack way too high to mount on the fork. I'm not gonna lie, this left me feeling pretty defeated, but I know adapters can never substitute for the real deal anyway. I ended up calling Rivendell Bicycles to see if they could weld eyelets, and they referred me to a local legendary frame builder, Bernie Mickelson, located at the Alameda Marina. Bernie has been building bike frames out of steel since 1974, so I definitely trust the quality of his work. 
For 30 bucks a pop, I had freshly welded eyelets within an hour. Simply incredible. Even with the new eyelets, I had another hurdle to overcome. I noticed the mounting bracket for the rack was obstructing the straddle cable on the front cantilever brake. The solution is a mini V-brake. This is a cheap and worthy upgrade since it has superior braking power over the cantilever brakes. Ah, much better. The rack I'm choosing to use is the Pelago commuter front rack. I chose this rack for its wide void platform, traditional styling, and stainless steel construction. It also comes with a bracket for a front light, which is cool. And now there's nothing left to do but to install the rack itself. It looks like there's a gap between the rack and the mounting bracket, so I'm gonna take an old piece of wood and make a spacer out of it. I'm even gonna drill holes into it since this is my ultimate weight weenie bite. To complete the package, I found a portour bag by local bag makers inside line equipment in Berkeley. So I decided to pay them a visit. There were two sizes, and ultimately I decided to go with the large and wax canvas green. What's cool about the ILE Portour bag is that it has straps at the bottom to keep it secure when the rack is fully loaded. You know, there aren't a lot of things I'd purchase today that would give me the confidence in saying that it will last the test of time. I think that's what makes the vintage mountain bike so special. After 30 years, this bike is recycled from being the top of the line mountain bike back in its day to a slick commuter bike. Hell, this would even make a nice gravel bike. Whether you're looking for a touring bike, cross bike, or a commuter, the potential is boundless. This won't be the last time you see this bike, as I'll be making more videos with it. Stick around if you want to see me put it through its paces as a gravel bike. If you want to stay nonchalant, check out this video about Morgan's vintage mountain bike turned monster cross bike. Till next time.